In this session, we will derive the EMM equation of the alternator and also some numericals on the EMM equation. The EM equation we are using the some of the terminologies that is uh, pi is the useful flux per pole in Weber's the P is the, the total number of poles whereas the ZP is the total number of conductors or coil sites in series per phase that is ZP is at its total is the number of conductors per phase the TP is the number of the coils or turns per phase or it is it is a number of turns per phase then n is the speed of the, the rotor in rpm whereas the f is the frequency of the generated voltage the kc and kd is r the coil span factor and distribution factors then we know that the induced voltage in an alternator is based on the electromagnetic induction that is Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction that is the first law state that whenever the magnetic flux cut the conductor there is a induced voltage that is the first law gives the information about how exactly there is a induced voltage in the conductor because of the magnetic flux which is cutting the conductor then there is a induced voltage at the same time the Faraday's second law gives the, the magnitude of the induced voltage magnitude of the induced voltage that is the magnitude of induced voltage or the the induced voltage is proportional to rate of change of the flux the so based on this Faraday's the second law will derive the EMF equation of the alternator we know that the the stator part of the alternator is the the stator I will consider the single conductor in the stator for deriving the equation I am considering a single conductor in the, the stator then I have got four poles I have got a four poles each pole has capability of producing the flux of 5 hours means the flux per pole is 5 hours here I am considering the, the four pole machine then when this rotor make one revolution therefore the total flux cut by the four poles or the number of poles is equal to p into phi in this case for for example if you are taking each is producing 0.5 ever each pole is producing 0.5 ever here it is four pole therefore the total flux cut in one revolution by a single conductor is 0.5 into 4 that is equal to Hours. In general, the total flux cut by P number of poles in one revolution is equal to P into 5. That is the, the total flux cut in the one revolution. At the same time, the time taken for one revolution is 60 by n second. That is, in n to make n number of revolutions, it will take 60, 60 seconds. Therefore, to make one revolution, the time taken is 60 by n, n second therefore the the rate of change of flux is d phi that is nothing but p into phi that is a dt that is a time taken for the one revolution so that to cut the flux of phi hours p times then the time taken is 60 by n that is we are taking for one revolution therefore you can see the animation here that is for one revolution the total flux cut by is p into the phi with this basic fundamental principle just will derive the equation here we will consider for one particular revolution of the rotor we know that since the flux per pole is 5 hours means each pole is capable of producing the flux of 5 hours each state or conductor cuts a flux of p phi means i am considering here single conductor and considering a single conductor in one revolution the p number of poles cut the total flux of p into 5 hours the average value of generated voltage per conductor is given by faraday's 
the second law that is d phi by dt that is once again you can recall the, the total flux cut in one revolution and time taken is the total flux cut is p into phi and time taken for one revolution is 60 by n second same thing i am showing here that is that is the flux cut per revolution in weber that is rate of change of flux that is the flux cut by conductor in one revolution that is p into phi and the time taken for one revolution that is 60 by n second that is rate of change of flux what we are getting that is nothing but average value of induced voltage in one of the conductor only one conductor just for mathematical uh, establishing the relation between the number of poles speed and the frequency what i am doing here is i am multiplying both numerator and denominator by 2 so that what i am getting here is 2 p n phi divided by 120 2 p n phi divided by 60 then i am regrouping the things that is 2 phi i am taking the first and p n by 20 i am making a group the p n by 120 is nothing but the frequency f therefore average voltage per conductor in one revolution what i am getting here is 2 pi f into force 2 pi f force since f is equal to p n by 1.8. Then what I am interested here is, I am interested in the RMS value of induced voltage. RMS value of the induced voltage. Therefore, first I am considering average value for Z number of conductor because I consider here for a single conductor. For one particular phase, one particular phase, the, there are ZP number of conductors. Therefore, average induced voltage for ZP number of conductors is nothing but you have to multiply ZP to this so that I am getting the average value for ZP number of conductors or the induced voltage for one particular phase. Therefore, E average per phase, what I am getting is 2F phi into ZP. ZP can be replaced by TP, that is ZP you are getting two times TP, therefore what I am getting is 4F phi into TP is the average voltage induced in one of the, the phase. The here in the three phase system all the calculations and analysis are made per phase basis. Therefore our objective is to find out the induced voltage per phase. That is why I am considering here per phase. Now this E average per phase can be converted into E RMS by multiplying 1.11. That is 1.11 then what I am getting is 4.44 phi f into tp is the induced voltage. Here we are not considering coil span factor and the distribution factor. If the coil is having a short pitch winding and if the, the coil is a distributed winding then you have to consider both kc and kd therefore the revised the value of e rms per phase can be written as including kc and kd is 4.44 kc kd phi f into tp holes if it is a full pitch winding that for alpha is equal to 0 therefore the cos alpha by 2 is 1 therefore the kc is 1 if it is a full pitch winding if it is sh short pitch winding you have to calculate then you have to find out the value of kc and you have to uh, in, uh, uh, substitute in this equation then the kd is also same thing if it is a concentrated winding in that case kd is equal to 1 However, the winding is, if it is a distributed one, then you have to calculate KD by beta and other things, then find out the value of K, KD and you have to substitute in the ERMS. If you are considering both short pitch winding as well as a distributed winding, then you have to consider both the factors in the type question. This is how you have to derive the EMF equation of an alternate. Then we will take up the, the numerical. Here, the stator of a three phase winding with eight poles, it is running with 750 rpm, having 72, 72 slots, and it has got 36 coils having 10 turns per coil. And he asked you to calculate the induced voltage EMF per phase if the flux per pole is 0.1 Weber and it is sinusoidally distributed, and also is given as a full pitch winding. Then you have to first list out the, the data given 
the number of holes speed the number of slots and the total number of piles and each pile containing 10 turns per pile and the flux is given and it is a full pitch winding is given therefore case is equal to 1 these are the the, the, the data you are listing out then the equation we are using for calculating the induced voltage and the relevant the equations are one is ERMS per phase that is 4.44 kc kd phi f into tp volts and kc is equal to cos alpha by 2 that is a coil span factor in this case kc is directly given as 1 and kd you have to calculate sin m beta by 2 divided by m sin beta by 2 then we know that the total number of slots we know 72 the number of slots per hole is 72 divided by 8 therefore it are getting 9 then we know the the formula for B, the B is, it is a slot angle, the slot angle can be calculated as 180 divided by N, that is 180 divided by the number of slots per hole, that is 180 divided by 9, that is what I am getting here is 20 degree. And M is nothing but it is a number of slots per pole per face. How we are getting this number of slots per pole per face? It is M is equal to n by 3. n is number of slots per pole. Divide with by number of phases, in this case it is 3. Therefore, n by 3 gives the, the m. In this case, it is 72 divided by 8 into 3, that is equal to 3. And if you are substituting the value of m and b in this particular equation, then what we are getting is kd is equal to 0.96. Then, the next step is to find out the value of number of the the turns per phase number of turns per phase here there are 36 coils first you find out how many the total number of turns there then you have to convert into the number of turns per phase here 36 coils with 10 turns per pile therefore the total number of turns is equal to 36 into 10 that is equal to 360 and the number of turns per phase here we are considering the three phase alternator the number of turns per phase is tp is equal to 360 divided by 3 that is equal to 120 we know the all the values in this equation kc we know kd we know phi f and tp f is also not given if you have to calculate that is f is equal to pn by 120 that is equal to 50 years now we know all the the parameters then you have to substitute in this equation so that i am getting the generated voltage per phase is equal to 3836 volts. The next numerical as a 6 pole 3 phase 50 hertz alternator has 12 slots per pole and 4 conductors per slot. The binding is 5 6 pitch and the flux per pole is 1.5 over. Then the armature coils are all connected in series with star connection calculate the EMF induced per phase. Once again, the same equation set of equations we are using and first you have to list out the, the data given. P is given, F is given, N is given, the number of conductors per slot is given, coil span is given 5 sixth of the pitch that we have to make use of and phi is, is given 1.5 meter. The equations what we are using for solving case this is the equation, main equation. Some of the parameters in this equation can be calculated from these two equations, Kc and the Kd. Now, you have to find out Kc. To get the Kc, what we need is alpha. To calculate alpha, you have to, we want a coil span. From that, you have to find out what is the value of alpha. Then find out Kc. Then you have to find out the Kd. In the KD, you have to calculate M. Here, you have to, from the given data, you have to calculate M. Also, you have to calculate the beta. And flux phi is given, and also F is given. F is given, and also the phi is given. The two data is given. And also, you have to find out the, the number of turns per phase. First, how? First, you have to find out KC. KC is equal to cos alpha by 2. Then to find out this, there is a one data is given, y span, y span is 5 6 
pitch. Why is it pitch? The pitch means it is a pole pitch that is equal to 180 degree. And coil span means it is a distance between the two coil sides. It is 5 sixth of pitch. 5 sixth of the pitch means 5 sixth of 180. That is 5 by 6 into 180. That is a coil span is 150 degree. Therefore, the short pitch angle or corded angle alpha, what we are getting is 180 minus 150, that is 30 degree. Thereby, we are getting Kc is equal to 0.96 is the, the value. Then, n is given, that is the number of slots for pole is 12 is given. Then, we know the formula for calculating the slot angle, that is beta that is equal to 180 divided by n. Here 180 n is given 12. 180 divided by 12 is 50 degree. And the number of slots per pole per phase can be calculated by n by 3. That is n is 12 here. The number of phases is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Then we know the value of m. We know the value of b. Just you have to substitute in this kd formula. Then what I am getting here is 0.96. Then we have to find out the total number of the turns first, then you have to convert it to number of turns per phase. First what is given 4 conductors per, there are 12 slots per pole, there are 12 slots per pole, there are such 6 slots are there, 6 poles are there, there are 12 slots per pole, there are 6 poles, therefore total number of slots is 12 into 6. Okay, total number of uh, slots is equal to 12 into 6. And there are 4 number of conductors per slot. Therefore, the total number of conductors is 12 into 6 into the 4. That is, the total number of conductors is equal to 12 into 6 into 4. That is 280. Then, the total number of turns. The total number of turns is 288 divided by 2. Because, the number of turns is equal to number of conductors divided by 2. Therefore, it is 144. Then the number of turns per phase then 144 divided by 3 that is 48. Now we know the, all the data then you have to substitute in the equation. What I am getting is the 40,730 volts or 14.73 is the answer. Then the, this is uh, the problem on the, the harmonics voltage that is just you have to load on the, the data given P is equal to 10 then the fundamental frequency is given 50 Hz and the third harmonic component frequency is 3 into 50 that is 150 Hz then the number of slots per pole for phase is given 2 then 4 conductors per slot is given coil span is also given 150 here what you have to do is you have to find out E1 and E3 then you have to take the square root of E1 square plus E3 square so that we have to get the, the total quotation. Here 51 is given that is 0.12 weber, 53 is also given 0 0.083 weber, then coil span factor is given 150 degree and alpha is the 30 degree. <coughs> and n you can calculate is nothing but we know that m is the number of slots per pole per phase. If you are multiplying to 3, that is the number of phases, what you are getting is number of slots per pole. Therefore, what I am getting is C, 6. Then beta, thereby 180 by n, that is equal to 30 degree, what I am getting. Then, I am calculating coil span factor as well as KD1 for the fundamental, what I am getting here is 0.96 and 0.96. Then, I am finding out the number of conductors, that is the total 10 number of poles are there. 2 slots per pole per phase that is 2 into 3 into 4 that gives the, the total number of conductors that is find out the total number of slots he is given number of slots per pole per phase that is what you have to do is 2 into 3 into 4 into 10 so that we are getting 240 thereby we are getting the total number of turns and per phase term is 40 then you have to find out the fundamental EMF substituting the value what I am getting is 995 volts. Similarly, you have to calculate for the, the third harmonic component KC3 and KD3 and the equation is